It's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined today by Mark Steinorth. He is a member of the California State Assembly. You are part of a class, you were just elected, that will be able to stay in the Assembly for 12 years. As a result of term limit reform, you will not be artificially removed after six years. Talk to us about what that means for you as you've just entered this august body. Well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much for having a me here. Absolutely. It's always good to be with you, Thank Brad. You. I appreciate mm. it. Um, of course, uh, we're part of a new freshman class, right. which is funny. My 15-year-old daughter, who is a ninth grader in high school, Got it. she teases me that we're both freshmen. Right, at the exactly. Same time. Right, well stated. But I'm I'm boarding because right. I sleep away, you do. and she gets to go home right. for school. Right, well stated. So, um, so it's really interesting. It's it's a dynamic. You remember the the previous class? It was a six-year term right. for the assembly. Right. So there still is one group of six-year right. members yes. Yes. that we have freshman and sophomore right. class that are 12-year right. members. Right. So when we get through the next election cycle, right. all of the six your members will have already been moved on and we will have three classes of 12-year members so effectively you take maybe four or five seats that are kind of iffy right. seats mine right. being one of those right. being a target aside from that you're going to see a possibility of eight years of continuity within the legislature true. we have not seen that since the beginning of term limits and what's exciting for some you as an example may have an issue that really matters to you right. I, mean, I don't know if you do and you'll tell me you'll be able to really live with that issue, Correct. learn that issue. You know, there are pluses and minuses of term limits, of but course. one minus, one could argue, is that it's hard to become that expert, Correct. especially if you get artificially removed after six years. But you will have that 12 years, presuming you know it all works out, you don't move on or whatever correct, it is. That's correct. Um, we talk about institutional knowledge. Right. Uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, unintended consequences of trying to move into a term limit mm. situation is all of that institutional knowledge left the elected members right. that are representative to the public, mm -hmm. and it moved into the staff right. that, unfortunately or fortunately, they, they end up having the power, and they're able to, to really try to move the the ball where it needs to go. What I think is a positive aspect mm -hmm. of the 12 years is like, for example, um, I may have a key care about. Right now, I'm learning the job. Yes. And instead of me throwing a Hail Mary, because I only have six years to be able to get that done, I have time to pace out, learn who the other players are, build relationships, start to understand the whole process so that I can follow that piece of legislation, not through just passing, but actually following it up so it really does what it was intended to do. What we are dealing with now is there's a whole series of legislation that's out there that maybe it, it's being handled in a way differently than what was the original purpose or intention. So, which I find fascinating is another byproduct of the 12 years is you're starting to see committees that are looking at oversight as being one of their key elements. I, I have the privilege, um, you were interviewing previously mm -hmm. um, uh, Vice Chairman Eric Linder right. uh, from the Government Affairs, Government Oversight mm -hmm. um, Organization right. Committee. Yeah. And I, I happen to serve on that committee. And one of the elements that the chair, Adam Gray, is looking at is bringing oversight back wow. in. Are you a vice chair of a committee yet? I am. I'm vice chair of housing, which for the Inland Empire is a fantastic. It is. It is. It is. So what other <clears throat> issues are you looking at? Housing, like you suggest. Well, but do you have that pet issue? I, I do. I, well, I have several pet issues. Uh, but, but again, I want to try and hold please, back some of no, them. But please. Um, right now, housing and its um, community development, mm -hmm. which we understand there's a lot of issues with low-income housing. How does that How is that? financed, and it's a current pet project of the speaker. Um, ah. Low-income housing is a very big issue to her. Well, let's talk about that. Were you on a city council before? At Rancho Cucamonga. Right, exactly. So That's you correct. may have been part of a city that had a redevelopment agency. That's Did correct. Rancho have one? We had a tremendously successful right. RDA that was dissolved, and our city wrote a check for $200 million back to the state. So you know how redevelopment can be successful. It has been I successful. I don't think you were a city that used redevelopment for golf courses. That's correct. And so now that the economy has turned around, now that the state is not in significant deficit, Deficit. Look, we know that the current governor was the one who chose to dissolve these re RDAs. Correct. But could there be a scenario whereby redevelopment comes back in some form, maybe just focused exclusively on low-income housing? Mm -hmm. You said the speaker right. is looking into that. Well, what do you think? Okay, that's a great question, and there's been a lot of discussion about son of RDA or RDA right, Jr., right, right, right. and they've got some nice little uh, right. terms for sure. them. It's interesting because a lot of the new freshman and sophomore class also have some local government right. experience, right. and I think that that really bodes well, but the governor has made it absolutely clear that RDA is not something that he's looking at. But 
again, could it be, let's call it something else. Right. Let's call it affordable housing, whatever well, it may be. Okay, to the point of affordable yeah. housing, there's different ways that are being discussed about financing mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, there's there's a discussion last year, I forget what the mm -hmm. assembly bill was that, that failed ultimately on the floor, was that they would add a $75 per transaction, per document fee for all um, refinancing. Mm -hmm. That's something that's being considered again right now. I think the refinancing window has kind of moved already. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of cheap sure. money. Most people that have taken advantage right. of it have already right. done so. And then there's also possibly tax credits where you could see that, you know, well, let's say we're doing a development. If we take a certain percentage of that development and we dedicate it towards low-income housing or affordable housing, uh, affordable housing for seniors, then you would be able to offset some of the profit that's being made from the rest of the development so that you would be able to find that balance. So, Local governments right. need affordable wow, housing because the state you. mandates right. a certain percentage of it, but they don't provide the resources to be able to allow it. So do you anticipate that during this term, this session, that we'll see some movement on Redevelopment, whatever you want to call it, affordable housing, mm -hmm. will will we see movement? I, I do believe with the impetus of the speaker mm -hmm. being so focused on mm -hmm. affordable housing, the fact that the governor has indicated that he is not against affordable housing, and also the, the different members that they chose for the committee, I think you will see some traction. Mm -hmm. If we can work together in a bipartisan way to be able to make sure that the, the responsibility financially is not burdened only one group or another, then I think we will be able to find a compromise solution. I want to talk about another bill that you're considering, mm -hmm. and that is dealing with Prop 47. Yes. So Prop 47 passed in November, yes. and it reclassified certain felonies to misdemeanors. Correct. The positive, I guess, is that the prison population has dropped, and that's a good thing for Governor Brown, who was at risk of being held in contempt of court of for not uh, um, sticking to a Supreme Court order. That being said, a lot of unintended consequences. Correct. You're looking to, allow, I think, allow the voters to revisit Prop 47, because I think it would need to go back to the voters, for one specific element. Talk to us about that. Okay, story. well, there is an assembly bill that, that was introduced, and I, I have the privilege of being right. a, a co-sponsor, co-author. It's um, Assembly Bill, I believe it's 390. Is this the Melendez bill? No, the that, Melendez is different. Okay. That, that's the one we're talking about, a, a gun in, right. in the case stolen of... Stolen theft. Exactly. Yeah, stolen and then there's a lackey bill that's dealing with... Um, uh, forget the name of it, but it's the um, date rape drug. Yes, I saw that as That's well. That's correct. Yes. But this one specifically is trying to maintain the DNA database. Mm -hmm. See, when you're, in, you're a felon and you go through the system, they're able to go and actually pull your DNA because it's a felony. And there's certain categories of felonies that they've been able to go back and fix a lot of these or solve a lot Literally. of these old cases. I mean, you speak the truth. It, Truly, they have solved crimes as a some result of... heinous right. crimes. They've been able to go back mm -hmm. and actually... And so the, what we're trying to do is that element of Prop 47 eliminates the ability for us to be able to pull and maintain that particular um, from that group of misdemeanors. Now, those felonies that are now reclassified as misdemeanors to be able to pull those DNA samples mm -hmm. so that we can use them to go back and try and close some of these old cases. We're trying to make sure that that element, that loophole is closed and we're able to, to continue. There was a great press conference that was done recently in the Capitol. Uh, our district attorney for San Bernardino County, Mike right. Ramos, was out there. The district attorney for Sacramento County was up there speaking. They brought in some of the victims' families. It was very, very heart-wrenching to listen to the stories and then it was encouraging to hear how the DNA database was really ultimately allowing and helping them to be able to find the, the culprits and the bad guys. So what are your friends on the Democratic side saying about these bills? Because I can't think that they are happy about the unintended consequences. Some of them including the lack of folks going to drug court, which I know is an important issue to, to many in the Democratic caucus. Well, the assembly um, bill that we're speaking of is, is specifically authored. The original intentional author is a Democrat. Ah, um, and he's, This he's is a, the bill, the AB 390. That's correct. Okay. And it's done by Assemblyman Cooper. And ah. he's, he's a freshman as well, and he has a law enforcement background um, from the Sacramento area where he's a captain and uh, was sure. a former captain and, you know, ran the jails there. So and he so knows. He's very right. well accustomed so to it. So are you starting to make friends on the Democratic side? Because, yeah. look, as a Republican, it's important because they are in the majority. Of if you course. want to get a bill passed, you of probably course. got to align with them. Well, it's really interesting. Going back to the 12-year term limits, you're right. finding yeah. that we don't have bomb throwers from either the right or the left. We have a lot more pragmatic, you know, I'd say solutions oriented legislators, and there is a lot of bipartisan relationship. You'll building. come back? Of course. Promise? I know. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> okay, his Always name is Mark Stein North. He's a member of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition.